Matthew Richardson, and today it's, well, it's now 12.01 p.m. Central Time, and welcome to another day of Cosmo Quest Astro Office Hours. So today, we're going to be doing something different. Um, for the past few streams, I believe we've been working through, like, problems and stuff like that, but today we're going to be, well, I'm going to be primarily just doing research. Um... But before I get into all of that, let me first go ahead and verify that I'm actually streaming. So, I'm going to go ahead and do my usual, open up a Chrome browser, and navigate over to Twitch. All right, it looks like everything is in order. Hey, Guido. So let's go ahead and pop out the chat. Let's see who's currently here. Hello, Susie. Hello, Electrical Skateboard. Hello, Jetlander8. Hello, Larry of the G Cloud. And hello, Michael T. Mayer. And hello, Guido. Even though it doesn't say you're not there, I know you're there. Um, yeah, Twitch really needs to be faster with that. I like Twitch, but I always have these issues with my chat, my chat box. All right. So, a while back, um, while doing my incidents angle analysis, I stumbled upon some issues within our database. Um, one of the primary issues being that some of the values are slightly off. Um, what I mean by that is to say that for images that we use for some of our projects, the um, latitude and longitude bounds for those images were slightly off. And so what I'm doing today is I'm going through some of those images and I'm, well, I'm going through all those images and I'll be correcting them. Oh, that is good to hear. So everything worked out with the, um, with the, with the issue of the resolutions, it looks like. I'm happy to hear that. All right, so let me just go ahead and just jump right into what I'm doing with this with this current set of pair with a pair of images I'm showing here on the screen. So um, the entire plan was to use some packages in IRAF, IRAF being short for the Image Reduction and Analysis Facility Packet um, Software, um, and it's some astronomical software and typically you probably like use it for like photometry and stuff like that. But um, I'm going to be using it with these LRO images, um, lunar reconnaissance orbiter images of the surface of the moon. And I'm going to see if I can go ahead and calculate the corrections for the latitude and longitude bounds of those images that have the problems. I was going to go ahead and use more of the software within IRAF to do this, but given that it's only like 14 images, I'm gonna do everything by eye. I think it'll be accurate enough. Hopefully you guys can see everything that I'm doing. I've tried my best to modify like the font for my XG term here in the upper right-hand region of the screen. And on the left portion of the screen is, um some imaging software called DS9. And so I'm using that software in conjunction with the IRAF software to be able to do what I'm doing with the images today.
Yep, I'm with you, Larry. I love computers. I hate computers. <laughs> hey, Susie. And hi, Jetlander. Welcome to today's stream. All right. So, as of right now, I'm currently looking at two images. One image, which is the image on the left, corresponds to the image that we have in our database. And the image on the right corresponds to an image that I've downloaded from um, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's online image archive. Now, the one thing I should mention, though, is the image on the left can, um, can actually get no bigger. So I'll actually zoom out so you can see the whole entire image. So I'll zoom to fit. The image on the left, that's the entire image. You can't see any more than that. But the image on the right can be modified. So I'm going to zoom out to fit. And so what you're, what you're kind of seeing me do here is I'm trying to match the two images, make them look exactly identical. Um, however, the image on the right is much bigger than this. So the problem that I was finding with our database was that the latitude and longitude bounds that we currently have in our database correspond to the entire, to full images within the LRO um, image arch archive. However, this particular image, the image in our database, is actually a sub-image. So, it's a sub-image in our database, but the um, values for the latitude and longitude bounds are equal to that of the larger, the much larger image that's being stored in the LRO database. And to kind of give you an example of what I mean, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually zoom out just a little bit more with this um, image on the right. So let's see, how far will it allow me to zoom? Um, I'm going to take this down to like 1400, see if it'll do that. Or even 1300. I think it should be able to, actually can probably do the entire X range. But So I'm modifying the X range right now for the right-hand image. Let's do 1300. Let's see if that works. And then we'll do 17,000 to 25,000. See if that works. Oh, all right. That's way too big for my current settings. 24,500. Would that work? Nope, that doesn't work neither. Oh, that's why it's not it's not working properly. I'll put 13,000 instead of 1,300. And now it should work. It looks the same, and it should. But if you notice, I've kind of zoomed out a little bit more. And there's more areas to this to this image as well. I can actually go from like, let's say, for example, twenty thousand to like thirty thousand. Well, I think thirty-eight or twenty-eight thousand. But to it's to make the point that. There's much more to the right, the right the image on the right. And so that's what I, that's what I ended up discovering was that the some of the images in our database are sub-images of the master images that are being stored on um, LRO's online online archive, image archive. And so all I'm trying to do is simply determine what section of the master of the, of the full images in the, the LRO archive we have in our database. And then from there, I can calculate, using some very simple math, I can calculate what um what the latitude and longitude, the correct latitude and longitude bounds are for the images that we only have sub-images of. Let's see. So let me go back. To the correct bounds. I think I put it at 1603. Put it here. I think I was here. 
And so really all I'm doing is I'm just using the zoom feature within the DS, DS9 um, image software and making sure things look right at the, at the corners. And if it does, then it looks good enough that I'm just going to go ahead and stop and use the right image to determine what the um what the well how many pixels there are along the x and y axes and then i can use a simple conversion to go from um pixel space to latitude and longitude space all right and so i think i i, I did this first image this is the first of the 14 and i think i was able to pretty much do a pretty good job in determining what the, um, or getting identical images, essentially. And so now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is to see how many pixels there are along um, the X dimension and how many pixels there are, along, there are along the Y dimension. But not just that, I also need to know exactly where with, what do I need? No. I just simply, I think I just simply need to know. Let me just go ahead and do what I'm doing right now, actually, which is just determining how many pixels there are along the X and Y, y directions. Let's see if there's any comments I may have missed. Hey, Peter. Hey, Keeper of Maps. All right, so if I'm quiet at times, I apologize. Um, it just means I'm thinking about what I'm doing, <laughs> trying to make sure I'm not like making any mistakes. And so the way in which I'm gonna do the calculation is that for the full LRO images, I know the, um, the minimum and maximum values for both the latitude and for the longitude for the image. And so what I can do is I can essentially just count the, um, the number of pixels. Like for example, I can count the number of pixels there are along the Y dimension. And given the height of the Y dimension, I can compare that or I can set that equal to, or no, not equal to, yeah, I can set it equal to. I can say that so many pixels along the y direction is equivalent to some um, change in um, latitude. And then I could do the exact same thing with the x dimension. I can say so many pixels along the x dimension is equivalent to some change in longitude. And given that information, I can I can now create a conversion factor and figure out ex exactly um what the latitude and longitude bounds are for the section that we currently are using within our database. Which will always be the images on the right. Or left, excuse me. Ah. All right, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so I can see that a little bit better. So this should start zooming a little bit more. And so what I'm trying to do now is use the the um, viewing window, which is in the upper right hand corner of the DS9 um, window to kind of make sure I'm, I'm starting on the right pixel. So it looks like it's starting at a physical position of 1603. So I'll write that down somewhere because I will forget it if I don't write it down. You guys can't see me writing this down, but I'm writing it down. So 1603 is the starting X exposition and the final exposition
So, so has the issue been fixed with the um with the resolution? I'm I'm, I'm looking at the conversation here, and I'm seeing that there may have been an issue with the resolution in, with another stream. If so, I'm going to, I'm, I'll pass it along to Pamela to, to let her know. And also to um, Joe. Okay, it's fine here, all right. Okay, thanks guys. All right, so X and and so for the ending X value, I should end up getting. So I'm going to include this black space here as well. It looks like it's skipping a pixel. So I think it should be. Fifty sixty three. Huh, that's weird. Cause actually the X N should be fifty sixty four. So I'm gonna put that down. And I know it should be fifty sixty four because if I'm not mistaken, the the number of pixels along the X axis for this image should be 5,064 pixels, so. All right. Now let's get the Y range. So Y start. And I can use the exact same corner for this. So it's at a physical Y value of 24,431. Let's use that. Twenty-four thousand four hundred thirty-one. Y end. So I have to go down to any of the lower corners. And it looks like that's a lot better with me zooming in like this. Okay. It looks like, and I think I go to white space, yeah. It looks like I'm at 17,630. 17,630. All right. <clears throat> you know what? I think it'd be better if I actually show you what I'm what I'm doing here versus me just doing it and you guys can't see me doing it. So um give me one second. I'm gonna open up another another scene here. So let's do this. Let's duplicate the scene. Nope, let's not duplicate the scene. Let's just go ahead and add another scene. I've always had issues with the duplicating the scenes in the past. All right. And then we're going to add video capture. Okay. You guys hopefully can still hear me. All right. Perfect. Wow, that is really big. Let's make that smaller. Um, right about, oops. Kind of messed up the original aspect ratio. There we go. All right, so let's put me over here in the corner. And I'm going to need another window for my text box. And where was it? Let 
Let's just make this bigger. All right. So all I did was just basically just write down <clears throat> what the um, pixel positions were for x start, x in, y in, y start. And so now what I'll, I'll need to do is get my conversion factor. So conversion factors. Conversion. All right. So let's see. For this, you guys won't be able to see me do it again, but I'm going to open up the um, the LRO image that I currently have. <clears throat> and just not, not even open up the, the actual image. I'm just going to open up um, a window for the metadata for the image. Or better yet, I can look it up online. All right. So give me one second. So, oh, mess. <clears throat> and so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I'm going to also create another scene for this as well. All right, <clears throat> so the current image that I'm working with, and guys, <laughs> yeah, that image was pretty big, wasn't it? Okay, so, um, yeah, thank you, Keeper of Maps, for answering that for me. So, yeah, no star fields today. Um, today, these are all LRO images. And as Keeper of Maps already stated, images of the moon. Okay, I see Guido. All right. All right, so the image I'm currently working with, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, that is a great question. What is the name of the image I'm currently working with? I know it starts with M and it's a bunch of numbers. Um, let's see. Here it is. M109, so let me just type this as I go. M109, 215, 691, L, 691, L, 691, L. And it should be, well, L works. So let's go ahead and click that. It's going to go ahead and find the image for me. It's searching still. And I believe it's found it. So I can now scroll down. And there are two options. And the one I want to choose, the one that says LE. So I'll click on that, and there it is. There is the, so on the right on the right hand portion of this screen is the entire image, but in our database though we only have a subsection of this image, but we're still using the entire lat latitude and longitude range for the full image, which is which was the problem. So I can I can quickly set up a um a quick conversion factor. And so I can scroll down on the left hand side of the of this page and what I'll end up finding are the values that are stored here. And so what's important to me right now is the upper right latitude, upper right longitude, 
and then everything below that, excluding um space spacecraft altitude and target center di distance. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the maximum latitude in the I'm going to take the difference between the maximum latitude and the minimum latitude. And so the maximum latitude is upper right latitude is 26.53. All right, so it's 26.53 minus 25.59. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. 26.53 minus 25.59. That'll give me something. So I should write this as lat, lat range. And so you can kind of see here that I'm, I'm writing this information down here. All right. And so now I need the, the longitude range. And again, I'm just going to take the maximum longitude and minus the minimum longitude. Um, it looks like the minimum longitude is 3.62. And the max is 3.73. So 3.73 minus 3.62. And so now I also need to know for this image how many pixels there are in total along the x and y axes. So x range and y range. And I can just simply just well what, what can you guys currently see? Good, all right. I can I can just simply scroll up and get this information actually. And it is stated here. In these two lines here. So um if I'm not mistaken, image lines is the number of rows in the image. And line samples is the number of columns in the image. Or another way to put this is um, the line samples is um, the number of pixels in the X dimension, the horizontal dimension, and the image lines is the number of pixels in the um, along the Y dimension. So X range is 5064. I'll just write that down. And the Y range is 52224. 52224. All right. Is there anything? I think that's all I need from this from from the online archive right now. So let me quickly look at comments to make sure I haven't missed anything. So keeper of maps, what is maximum more northerly top of the image? So um yeah, we I think we had a really good long conversation about this. Um the maximum in this case the maximum like maximum latitude would have to be more northerly, yes. And so if you if you if you're talking about latitude that is um, if you're talking about longitude, I think you and I had a conversation about this, and I think that if you increase or the maximum longitude corresponds to being more westward, I think that's what we what we end up discussing and coming up with. It's because their system goes from 0 to 360. Instead of it being from like negative 180 to, to positive 180. Which to me just makes so much more sense.
But, um... Susie is lurking. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and calculate. So I'm going to go back to the other window I had. All right, so 26.53 minus 25.59. Um, it looks like it's almost close to one. What is that? 0 0.93 or 96? Let's see. Blah, blah, one. What's wrong with me? Um, no, but you have to borrow. So 15... Yeah, zero point zero point nine. I guess zero point nine three. Let's make sure that's right. Up oh, zero point nine four, Matt. Duh. All right. So is an image composed of several camera shots. So um, from my understanding, whenever an image of a particular region on the surface is taken with this um, particular um, camera setup, it's taken by two different cameras. But they're all they're both a part of the same imaging system. So um, this is the LRO's NAC camera system. And it's composed of two different cameras. One that takes kind of like a left perspective of, of, the, of the field, and the other one that takes a right perspective of the field. But a single image comes from one of those cameras, though. So the image that we're looking at here, so I'll go back. Well, the image to my face is kind of covering up right now. Let's minimize myself a little bit there. This image has been taken from, and I'll scroll up actually on, on the on the page. If you look at the um the product ID, which is the very top line here, this is product, and it has that M109 and so forth. The L within this image um product ID corresponds to corresponds to the fact that this image comes from the left perspective or the left camera of this um of this imaging system. And so you can even you can even look up and it'll say view this NAX pair, where NAC is um short for narrow angle camera. Hey Kosloth. Are they push broom sensors? That is a great question, which I do not have the answer to. In fact, what, what, <laughs> what is that, actually? I'm going to look that up right now. I'm curious now. So you said push. Got the cap locks on. Push broom sensor. Huh. For spectral analysis. And I believe you're right, actually. If you look down here, it says here, examples of spacecraft cameras using push broom imagers, including um, the um, Mars Express is high resolution zero camera and the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera NAC. So yeah, these would be push broom sensors or push broom scanners, excuse me. 
See, you guys are always having me learn new stuff because I didn't even know that. In, in fact, until today, I didn't know what a push broom scanner is was. Oh, I see what you're saying now. That's a good analogy. Oh, it's the exact same thing. Gotcha. Huh. And see here, I thought I was going to be sitting up here talking about my research. And I'm learning some new stuff here. Well, I would imagine you had to study remote sensing, given um, your, given your job before. <laughs> For dust attached to it. <laughs> Is that where the name comes from? All right. So let's go back. Finish doing these calculations. It should be very simple calculations. Um, zero point... 11, all right. All right, so that's that. I have my, I should have my conversion factors now. All right, and so there is one more bit of information I would need to know. I would need to do these calculations relative to um, one of the co corners. Where I know what that corner's latitude and longitude is in order for this to work out properly. So I need to know an offset. So offset in X and offset in Y. All right. So let's do this. Hmm. I'm going to go back to my DS9 software. And I'm going to find out what the lower left hand corner looks like. So, DS9, where are you? There you go. And I need my XG term to do this. All right, so I'm going to go in, in, in number in viewing window number two. I'm going to display the lower left hand corner, which probably can just be one to like, let's say, twenty five hundred. Actually, that might work. And so then this would have to be. From one to also, I'll put twenty five hundred. Makes it simple. Oops. Oh, that's way too small, probably. So like seven thousand. Hmm. 
Why can't, oh, that's why I can't see an image. Here we go. All right. That is weird. What's going on here? That is the image. Hmm. Sorry, guys. I'm having one of those moments of having some awkward silence there. This looks weird to me right now. Let me check this out. Look at the full image. You guys can't see what I'm doing right now, but I'm I'm looking at the full image using some other using preview. Um Max preview on software. Let's see desktop. Where do I store this? I store this in here. Is that what that looks like? Okay, that is indeed what it looks like. All right, cool. So, all right, so now that I know what the lower left-hand corner looks like, I need to find this lower left-hand corner um, using the image that's actually on the image on LRO's image archive and figure out exactly what the latitude and longitude is for that corner. So, ah, so um, coleslaw, what I'm currently doing is um, making some corrections to some values in, in CosmoQuest's um, database. So what I ended up discovering um, a little while ago was that some of the images in our database don't have the correct latitude and longitude bounds. However, I can make the I can make those corrections by um, essentially figuring out what our images, what our image sections are, where our image sections are located within the full LRO images and then do some like some simple calculations to end up calculating what the um, correct bounds should be. I feel like that didn't come out exactly the way I wanted it to come out. Um, physical examples are so much better. And to do that, I can probably just use this. Give me one second. Huh. All right. Let's zoom to fit. All right. So this is the explanation I gave earlier. And let's correct the, the region. Let's do this. All right. So the, I'll wait for this to finish loading. Perfect. The image on the left is the image that we currently have within our database and that we're using for our moon mapper um, project. That is, we take this image and we cut it into a bunch of smaller um, slices and then request our citizen scientists to locate craters within the images, the sliced images. However, what I end up discovering is that the latitude and longitude bounds, that is, the latitude, the beginning latitude and the ending latitude that, um describes the y direction and the ending and, and starting longitude describes the x direction are incorrect for this image. However, they're correct for the full image that's being stored um, on LRO's online image archive. And so 
That is to say that this image on the left-hand um, portion of the screen is a sub-image of the fuller image um, that's being stored on the image archive online. And so what I'm trying to do is figure out what the um, correct latitude and longitude bounds are for this image. And there's 14, there's, well, 13 more images in our database that have the same issue. And to do this, basically what I'm doing is um, taking the left image, which is the actual image we have in our, in our, our, in our, um, in our database, and I'm finding or I'm trying to, to, to isolate the sub-image within the much full, the much larger, the full image that's being stored on the um, on LRO's image archive, and I'm trying to basically match those fields. So I've been playing around with the um, with the pixel dimensions for, or the pixel, I guess the ending and ending and starting pixel values for the right-hand image, which is the actual full image that I've gotten from LRO's image archive. To kind of give you an example of what I mean by that, I can change the bounds, and you can kind of see this. I think you, I think I have it set to the right one. Yeah, I can change the um, the bounds. For example, I can set this to to fifteen hundred, and I can set this one to let's say sixteen. 16,500 and what it'll end up doing is it'll it'll change the image it still looks slightly the same but it's not and so what I've done is I found out well to, to the best of my ability I found out what the correct pixel ranges should be in the X and Y coordinate And now that I know this information, I can use um, the, Im the information I just gathered from um, the Online Image Archives um, database, which I've now kind of taken that information here to establish a conversion factor. So if I go so far in X, that also means I went so far as far as latitude's concerned, and the same thing with Y. If I go so far in Y, it means I, I went so far with um, in longitude. As far as the images are concerned. Let's see um, here. And if that did not make sense, please let me know and I, I will re-explain it. <laughs> you would be right. So Keeper of Maps, are all the pixels the same size? Yes. Or just about, actually. Um... They are they are fairly square, and so we can actually get that information from the um the the online archive. So going back here again, let's see. Yeah, they're um they're fairly fairly square. Pixel width is about 0 0.5. Pixel height is about 0 0.54. All right. Yeah, five meters per pixel sounds about right for LRO. Or, I'm always getting the um the pixel resolutions for 
for the lunar reconnaissance orbiter and the Mars reconnaissance orbiter is kind of mixed up, or the CTX on the Mars reconnaissance or orbiter. But I, I think I think five meters per pixel is is is. No 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 wait 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 no. That's. No, I don't. I don't think that's right. Actually, I think I think the lunar reconnaissance orbiter has a much, a much um. Much finer resolution. I think you can get sub meter sub meter resolution with the um, lunar reconnaissance orbiter. I think it says as it states here, like point five. I think it's like half a meter. And with the CTX on the lunar on the Mars reconnaissance orbiter, I think it's it's about it's like five five meters per pixel. <clears throat> so um so so big j were you guys were you guys talking about the lunar reconnaissance orbiter or were you talking about the mars reconnaissance orbiter the ctx images from there Ah, thank you. Thank you, Susie. Yes. Okay, that's what I kind of remembered exactly. The resolution for the CTX is about six meters or like like five meters. I kind of rounded it. Yes, yeah, six meters per pixel on CTX sounds sounds right. And I think on, on the on the lunar reconnaissance orbiter for the NAC, I think it's like 0.5 meters per pixel. I think that's about roughly right. Oh, we were talking about the large images that the website breaks up into the mapper. Okay, now I'm actually curious, guys. <laughs> um, but thank you, Susie, for doing that um that fact check. Um, so I'm going to quickly look that up actually, because I'm now curious myself. I, I think, I think it's, 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 it's half a meter. So let's just go here. Um, LRO NAC resolution. Yeah, I think it's half a meter, but let's see. Okay, I think this is it, yeah. LRO consists of two narrow angle cameras that are designed to provide 0.5 meter scale. Yeah. So it's it's So that should be the resolution. About half a meter. So we can see um or we can resolve objects that are separated by no less than um 0.5 meters in sp in um space between them. With these images, at least. All right. All right, so I need to figure out this offset. Right, so I was looking at... So going back here, I was using DS9 on the right image, the right image... Of, the image on the right hand side and 
if I'm not mistaken, I had changed the um the bounding regions for that image to be the lower left hand corner. So let me redo that. So let's see, where did I put it at? I think I put it, yeah, I put it here. And so that will change the image to now display, at least display the region that, that includes the lower left-hand corner. And so now I can zoom in. Kind of center that. Or actually, let me zoom back out because I want to be able to see what it looks like. All right. So now, now that I know what it looks like, <clears throat> I need to go back to the image that I, I I was looking at on the image on the online image archive. It's here. All right, and so now I need to zoom in on this image. And kind of do like a comparison. I know it's somewhere, I know it's either the upper left or the upper right corner of this, of this image. All right, let's look at this one. All right. Now note that within our database, the um the images have underwent a rotation and possibly even been been flipped. So in order to be able to compare them, you'd have to like kind of like mentally either rotate and or flip the image. And so let's see, I think, let's see, is this one I want? I don't think this is the side I want. Let's move over. Thanks, Susie. <laughs> hey Skyhook, I am so sorry. I have no idea what any of this means. <laughs> so um as of right now, I'm just trying to correct some values in um our that is Cosmo Quest's um database. Hey Adam. Wait, wait, Big J. You know you know Sky? Who's Sky? Is this a person that 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 we know from Cosmo Quest or external to Cosmo Quest? Okay. Well, these um these pictures are, have been taken by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter's NAC camera system. She's only the best artist in the universe. <laughs> Great, that is great news. But yeah, the images that we're looking at today come, come from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. And I'm using these images to be able to make some corrections to our database. I'm going to allow that. Yeah, be careful. I think I think someone mentioned earlier that you know Susie's Susie's paying close attention to our comments, so we got to be careful what we say. Oh, guys, it's already one o'clock. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I've enjoyed the conversation. But um <laughs> I 
All right, guys. Um, I'm actually I actually got to get this done like by to by probably by within the next few hours. Um, so I can make some progress on my incidents angle analysis. Okay, guys. Well, thank you guys for joining today. I will be I will be back on um, Friday at twelve o'clock p.m. Central Time. I'm unsure if I'm going to be doing more research. More than likely, I'm going to set up a problem. And we'll work through it. But um, thanks. Thank you guys for joining, and I will see you on Friday. All right, guys. Bye.